Why, yes, as a matter of fact, there is a brand new addition to the wardrobe lineup. Thanks ever so much for noticing, and how fitting that it should arrive just in time for episode number 400. And thanks also once again to Vanessa and Ryan and the whole team at Men's League Sweaters in St. Joseph, Michigan for another job well done. And you know how you can tell when you're dealing with a quality organization? When you do business with a place and you go back a year later and do business with them again and it's all the same people and they know who you are and they remember how you like things and even in the cold, impersonal age of internet commerce, that still counts for something, in the opinion of this reporter. And if you would like one of these bad boys for yourself, then, then help get me to 10,000 subs and I will open up the curmudgeon shop. That's Men's League Sweaters, St. Joseph, Michigan. They don't just do hockey jerseys either. They got hoodies, they got hats, track suits, flags, all manner of things. If you need something customized, go see these guys. Or go to the website, at any rate. It might be slightly creepy if you show up in person. So what's going on in the news? Well, the Republican primaries are over, for starters, which most people sort of knew already, but man... Donald Trump dropped the kind of ass-kicking that you just don't really ever see in the Iowa caucuses when, when there's a contested nomination at stake. If you've been paying attention to this stuff for any length of time, you don't need me to tell you that in years with a contested nomination, there's always a pretty even split in the Iowa caucuses. Oftentimes, some rather goofy candidates will wind up winning the thing or nearly winning it. Your Pat Robertsons, your Rick Santorums, your Michelle Bachmans, and so on. In 2016, not only did Trump not win Iowa, Ted Cruz won, but he very nearly finished in third. Freaking little Marco almost beat him out, and nobody finished over 30%. That's what always, always happens in the Iowa caucuses, but not this time. When one candidate gets over 50% in Iowa, and he beats the second and third place finishers combined, your nominating contest is over. It just is. The other 49 primaries are a formality at this point. Trump should start focusing on the general election right freaking now. And the sausage factory of lies and malevolence that we used to call our news media, they continue to find new and inventive ways of making absolute fools of themselves. Because of course they do. Not only did none of them wait to call the election until after the polls had closed, they called the damn thing about 10 minutes after the voting had started. And I don't pretend to have a very detailed understanding of how the whole caucusing thing works, but I think it goes something like everybody goes down to their local precinct and then brief statements are made on behalf of the various candidates by their designated surrogates and then there's a brief period of public comments and then the voting commences. So it's different from a normal election in the sense that in a normal election... People mostly already know how they're going to vote, and it's just a matter of going down to the polls and doing it. But, but with the caucus thing, there, there's an opportunity for people to say, you know, I'm still undecided at this point, but I'll go down there with an open mind, and I will allow myself to be persuaded. So it seems like a lot of the result in a system like that is down to the effectiveness of the surrogates that the campaigns send to the caucus sites, which could help explain why Iowa is always normally... A very closely run thing with the top three finishers usually within a few points of one another. But 50% and then some? That does not seem to evince a whole lot of indecision in the electorate. And that, of course, is the advantage that Trump has over any competitor, including and especially Joe Biden, because Trump's voters will crawl over broken glass naked in a blizzard to vote for him. Trump engenders a degree of loyalty and enthusiasm that are probably unprecedented in my lifetime. And there may not be a China virus this year, knock on wood, that enables the Democrats to change all the state voting laws to benefit themselves and call it public health. And bear in mind also, and Trump's campaign should really hammer away on this point, that a vote for Joe Biden in 2024 is a vote for Kamala Harris to be president of the United States. Because when you look at Biden's current condition... Can you picture him staying in office? Hell, can you picture him remaining alive until January of 2029? I mean, as terrifying as it is living in a world where Joe Biden can launch nuclear weapons, I think we can all agree it's preferable to a world where the California cackler can launch nuclear weapons. Hit the music, Jim Eagle. <laughs>